Hello, Pittsburgh Steelers fans. Hello, Steelers Nation. Welcome. Um, I'm your voice from across the pond, Brits Bergerian, and I'm reflecting back on the second day of the NFL draft. So the Pittsburgh Steelers have made their second and third round pick to add to the pick of Kenny Pickett from the first round. And in the second round, they went with a major need for the Steelers, which is the wide receiver position. They turned down, obviously, the option to draft Sky Moore, which came as a surprise to some. Sky Moore later ended up at the Kansas City Chiefs. Sky Moore was seen as been uh, liked by the Steelers, um, especially by Mike Tomlin. However, as we've proven with the whole Malik Willis smoke screen, what do we know in the outside world as Steeler fans or even as Steeler, Steeler media? Well, guys, so let's see. They've picked up George Pickens. So George Pickens, here's George Pickens here, wide receiver out of Georgia um, from Hoover in Alabama. He's a junior. He's six foot, 395 pounds. So he's definitely in that large, big, physical wide receiver uh, class type that the Steelers like. 32 and 3 inch arms, eight and three quarter inch hands. That is Mr. Pickens. Also from the NFL.com, he did his 40 yard dash in 4.47, vertical jump of 33, broad jump of 125. Uh, Georgia wide receiver George Pickens pulls in a touchdown pass in the first half of the Sugar Bowl. Baylor was a picture I took. Stats in 24 career games in Georgia, he caught 90 passes for 1,347 yards, averaging 15 in very impressive 15 yards per catch. And he caught four touchdowns so what does the nfl.com and what do the draft sites say about george pickens as a prospect as a wide receiver now obviously there were some concerns around his injury history he missed most of last season with um a non-contact acl injury um he also missed some of the previous season as well with injury so injury is a, something of a concern um for george pickens there are also some question marks over his character as well um so uh let's look at his strengths first of all so he battled back from the acl tear to play late on in the season so he showed determination to come back link up with his teammates and help Georgia to win the national title. He only caught one get, uh, pass in the national title game against Alabama, but it was a very impressive one year, one catch for 52 yards. He's got offhand and burst help, defeat and overtake the press. He makes quick stop and turn on, on drive routes. He creates throwing windows with suddenness at the break points. Um, he has got a good way of getting leverage as well. He plays with an appetite for the end zone. He really wants to get there. He fights to get into the end zone. He displays good focus when catching in a crowd, going up for that contested catch. Um, he catches with the heart, catches with sudden hands with elite catch radius. Um, he has a vice-like grip that very rarely lets him down. He is a very physical receiver. He's not afraid of contact. He's not afraid of fighting for the ball. He's not afraid of those contested combat catches uh, that. Uh, the, some of the Steelers players seem to be at this moment in time. He's very much a physical presence at wide receiver. He has got some weaknesses, um, like so, for instance, his effectiveness um, can sometimes be diminished by his uh, by the physical press at times. Um, sometimes he leaves coverage unstacked when he gets the early advantage. He lets them back in again. Um, he has missed a lot of time due to injury in 2021 with that ACL test. So that's obviously something the Steelers are going to have to work on down to the Steelers strength and conditioning coaches to really get George Pickens ready for this new season. Personally, I'm really pleased with this pick. He's one of the people I mock drafted to the Steelers on a number of occasions in the second round. I think he's big. He's physical. He's quick. I think he's going to add something to our wide receiver room. I think the injuries are something that held him back. I think if he'd had um, two seasons where he'd been at flat out top rate with no injuries, especially last season, I think Pickens could have gone well within the first round. He has skills and the skill set to become a wide receiver one of the future. Um, so I'm personally very pleased with that. The Steelers can make sure that he stays fit and can get his wide receivers coaches to work with him and really develop him. I really do think that Mr. Um, Pickens could become a high quality receiver. It seems this pick it to Pickens is becoming a real thing in Pittsburgh at this moment in time, doesn't it? Um, but Pickens also is the son of Carl Pickens, the former Bengal as well. So uh, just a side note there. Then in the third round, the Steelers took DeMarvin Leal of Texas A&M. They seem to like Texas A&M, don't they? They drafted two last season in Buddy Johnson and Dan Moore Jr. This year, they've gone back to get DeMarvin Leal. Um, he's six foot four, 283 pounds, 
33 and a quarter inch arms, nine and a half inch hands. Now, what is said about Mr. Um, Leal and what are the positives of having Leal on the team? So he has good experience all up and down the front line for the Aggies. Um, he moves fairly well in space for a man of his size. He has the ability to redirect and move laterally to adjust the pursuit of the ball or to work into a gap. He's effective at using burst and quickness at shooting the gaps, as well as in many twists and stunts up front. He can get skinny through gaps and block as whiff on their punch, or he sees a gap opening. He comes off the ball well out of his stance, especially in pass situations. He shoots a distinct pass rush plan for bigger, dif bigger defensive linemen. He's utilised the jump, swipe, move and inside spin a fair amount during his time in college. So there's some lots of positives to go with DeMarvin Leal. Uh, obviously, again, there's some questions over DeMarvin Leal's character and also the fact that he didn't test well um, at the Combine and in his pro day, which uh, moved him down. His draft stock was a lot higher before those. In fact, he was being thought of again as a first round prospect. So if we look at the uh, NFL draft day two as a whole, you know, who has had at this point what you would call a decent draft? There's a few teams, obviously, in that first round did exceptionally well. The New York Jets being one of them, for example. Um, the uh, Baltimore Ravens, unfortunately, uh, didn't do did it very, very well getting Tyler Linderbaum and Kyle Hamilton. Another surprise coming out of me, uh, for me, out of day two two was the fact that uh, Malik Willis fell into that third round and went to Tennessee. I think he's obviously got a good situation in Tennessee there because he can sit behind Ryan Tannehill and learn for a year and then perhaps be a position to start next season. Uh, Matt Corral um, was obviously taken as well in this, ra in this round, um, which was an interesting one uh, that he was again able to drop so far. Uh, for me, I think you know the Baltimore Ravens, unfortunately, have had quite a good draft to this point. They got hold of one of my personal draft crushes, Travis Jones, gutted that one of my favourite players in this draft is going to be wearing purple. <sighs> Man, what a nightmare. So the Carolina Panthers, it was, it's like Matt Carroll, 94th pick, yeah. And the... Oh, here they also got David Ajabo, who would not have fallen, I don't think, had he not had that injury at his pro day. In addition to that, um, you know, just before us in the draft, uh, the Eagles got Kobe Dean, who was again a first round draft prospect in many mock drafts and many analysts eyes before this actual draft. But to see Dean go at 83 was quite a surprise. Um, Atlanta obviously picked Des Ridder which was an interesting pick as well. Um, Andrew Booth Jr. went to the Vikings. They've got a pretty decent secondary now with him and Louis Cine as well. So some interesting picks um, in on day two, uh, some really exciting ones. Going into uh, day three, there are still a lot of talent, talent on the market. Um, even Sam Howell, who was again projected to be a second round quarterback, is still on the board and could well be picked up by a team still having a quarterback need. Well, that's pretty much it from me. That's my reflections. I was pretty pleased with the two picks picks on day two. I thought George Pickens was a very good pick. I think DeMarvin Leal is a development pick. And he may not fit in with um, Kevin Colbert's words of the first three picks needing to be starters. Mainly, I think, because you are behind three of the best defensive linemen in the NFL if they are returning Cam Haywood, Tyson Alulu, and Stefan Tuitt. That's my thoughts anyway. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you haven't subject to this channel, get yourself subbing, please, and join the Steelers revolution. Anyway, let's finish this as we finish everything with, here we go, Steelers, come on.